Serious, friends of sociopaths psychopaths, what was your most uncomfortable moment with them? This kid in my 8th grade class. He showed us a video of him lighting a cat on fire while it was alive. He thought it was funny. We reported the video to the school and he was apprehended next day. I believe you can find a news story online about it. It happened in Maryland a few years ago. I dated one once. Didn't realize it until much later when the abuse was so thick I couldn't breathe. The one situation that sticks out the most was one night. Completely unsolicited. He looked at me solemnly and said if you ever left me I would find you and heal you. 11 years of sheet like that. Suffice to say I'm glad I've got an entire country between myself and him now. When he told my GF, sitting beside me at the time, that if she did something horrible to me, and we broke up, that he would mad dare me for her. Edit, clarity, hopefully that helped. I've been long time friends with a sociopath. He is honestly like my brother. We have developed this relationship that basically treats me like his moral compass. But it doesn't always work. He is still manipulative and cruel at times. And he does only truly care about himself. But he tries to be a good person because he doesn't want to be an asshole. This being said my most uncomfortable moment with him would have to be when he was telling me about watching some guy almost die. He was telling me how he knew he should have stopped watching and helped him. But he was too interested in what the outcome would be if he didn't help. It was creepy to know that as hard as he may try to be a decent person. Sometimes he still can't he help himself. He once tried to manipulate me to come in and work basically 50 hours. 10 of which would be off the clock so that I didn't get overtime. Because he knew that if he could keep labor low on his shift he could get a promotion. He would also expressly lie to my face about giving me a break saying verbatim I'll come back here in a moment and take over. So that you can go on break then he would just never come. Then when the time has passed to wear a break would be irrelevant. That is. 30 minutes before my shift is over. He'd offer again. I have a friend who's a pathological liar. He's also mostly Scottish in heritage, Northern Scotland. Where the Viking influences. He's 6 feet 8. 350 pounds when he's watching his weight. 400 plus when he isn't and there is a lot of muscle to go with everything else. The lies aren't all that awful most of the time. He's known as a very entertaining storyteller and everyone knows he'll embellish greatly from time to time. But he can't keep a girlfriend. Apparently he can't be honest. He's a pathological cheater. The lies catch up with his relationships in a few weeks at most. One day we were in a taxi together and he got the idea that the driver was taking a route that was unnecessarily long. He stopped the cheerful story he was telling me mid-sentence. His face changed and he barked at the cab driver in a voice I'd never heard. Loud and angry and aggressive. The cab driver immediately pulled over and let us out without paying. And a good thing too, I think my friend was about to heal him. I was petrified in my seat. I felt like he might heal everyone in range. I was terrified. It was the last time I spent time with him. Though I'd known him for 20 years. I later learned that he won't associate with someone after they've seen him snap. As one of his other ex-friends put it. When he would tell a story that I was a part of and make up huge lies of what happened. Even sometimes switch his role and mine. And I would just awkwardly nod my head and wonder if he truly remembered it that way. He had a gas powered pellet gum and we were 13 years old. And it was one of my first times being high. He had me against the wall and gave me 5 minutes to choose between him shooting me in the genitals or in the head. If I didn't choose. He said he was just gonna go nuts. I just kinda fidgeted in place saying you're gonna heal me. I was 13 and high. And at the end of the 5 minutes he told me he was ducking with me. He also emptied a huge box of matches into the sink one time and when we all told him not to. He called us pusses and lit it all on fire. He was a major pyro. I'm pretty sure he's in jail now, I'm 19 and he's 20. He told me I must be seriously mentally ill for being upset that he, while dating me, propositioned my married best friend. My brother is a sociopath. 
as well as a homeless hero and junkie. For the most part he stays hidden from view and away from my family. During his active times where he comes around looking for money from family members is the most uncomfortable. Because when he doesn't get it he resorts to burglary. Having to leave home not knowing if he'll be burglarized is stressful. I wish he would just OD or go to prison already. It would be so much better for everyone. When they told me they see their friends and people as playthings. Probably when he thought it was funny to hold a knife to my throat. She used to brag about her therapist diagnosing her as a sociopath. And then obviously deny it when it was ever brought up. I think the moment that put it all into perspective was when she manipulated me into having a threesome with her and her ex. She knew I was in love with her, because she thought it would get him to take her back. It goes a little deeper than that. But that's the gist of it. I just about stabbed my sociopath stepfather in the guts while doing dishes. He'd been doing his thing. Which was sitting behind me about 15 feet away and staring at me without saying anything for about 20 minutes while I cleaned up the kitchen after dinner. 20. Ducking. Minutes. Of. Staring. I was washing a butcher knife when the hair on the back of my neck stood up and I realized he was right behind me. He was a big guy. And I am not sure how I did not hear him. I turned around with the knife and instinctively shoved it at him. He managed to suck in his gut and not get cut. I was saying. Over and over again. Jet the decor away from. Jet the decor away from. Jet the decor away from. He didn't make a sound. And went upstairs. I was 16 years old. And that's when I knew one of us was going to go to jail if nothing changed. Married one. Last straw was the day I caught his reflection as I passed by. Pure evil and hatred in his eyes. I told him I was leaving the following week. He said. If I ever see you somewhere with someone else. I won't say a word to you. I said okay. He then added. I'll just walk up to you and shoot you in your pretty face. I was moving some things out and looked under the bed for a pair of shoes. Found his gums. Fully loaded and out of their cases under his side of the bed. I went to the cops. Nothing came of it. Fast forward and he remarries before the ink is dry on the divorce. New wife shoots him in the head and heals him in his sleep. Proceeds to heal herself by oding on his pain pills. Yeah. I sleep better these days. When he took the opportunity of being alone with my mom for one minute to stare her down and ask if she thought he was mature for his age. He's ducking creepy. I dated one a bit over a decade ago. He fits the description of a sociopath more than a psychopath. But he's also narcissistic. We dated on high school for a little over a year. Aside from the constant gaslighting. Lies. Manipulation and threats. He was basically a sheety person who warped my mind so much that I actually believed I'd be nothing without him. Whether driving erratically with me in car when I questioned him. Or threatening physical violence on me and my family if I broke up with him. He was truly terrifying by the end of our relationship. The absolutely most uncomfortable terrifying moment was when he put a loaded hunting rifle in my face. He was addicted to weed up. I don't believe weed does a dangerous drug at all. But he was so psychology warped that he believed he was going through severe physical and mental withdrawals if he went a day or two without smoking. One night he decided he was going to rob a small convenience store in his town for weed or money. I stepped in front of his door to block his path and he pointed the gum at me. I bravely broke up with him a few days later. Blocked him on social media. Wouldn't answer his calls. And wouldn't answer the door when he showed up to my parents house. It took months for him to get the point that I was serious. 12 years later and I still have nightmares of him. My sister feels nothing but rage. When she doesn't feel rage. She feels. Literally. Nothing. She spends her life manipulating everyone around her and satisfying that rage. She mercilessly abused me growing up. She tried to heal me three times before I moved out. No one believed me. Because I was older and larger. I was always considered to be the aggressor. Even when I was being violently assaulted in my sleep. Living with her was a nightmare. 
the most uncomfortable moment between us wasn't something she did to me. It was something I considered doing to her. I'd been sent up to the crawl space to get an ornament. You could only access it from a ladder in the garage. When I grabbed it and turned around. She was at the top of the ladder. Staring at me. There wasn't any room for her to come up. She was just waiting there. Staring. She told me to get out of the way. And I told her I couldn't. There wasn't room for two people in the crawl space. She'd have to go back down the ladder. She immediately switched to rage. She said she hated me. And she wasn't going to let me down from the crawl space. It was 110 degrees in there. And I was already exhausted. I remember thinking. She's at the top of a ladder. Over a cement floor. I could make this stop. I'd just say it was an accident. I'm only 12. No one would convict me. As soon as I thought that. Her face suddenly went blank. And she went back down the ladder. My sister is a sociopath. It took me a lot of years to realize this and stop rationalizing it. I'm a diabetic and have been in comas. During the last one in 2015. After a year of no contact. She showed up at the hospital saying I had expressed to her that my wishes were to not resuscitate. About 12 of my friends shouted her down and I woke up 3 days later on my own. If I had coded during that time. However. There would have been a lot of grey area around if they were allowed to revive me. About 4 months later she took out a life insurance policy on me and asked me to sign it I said no lol. I no longer speak to her. Oh man. This blew up. I should add that I now have very clear wishes notarized and copies kept with my doctors and trusted friends. She's not taking me out that easily. Thank you guys for being concerned. It's great advice for everyone in a medical situation to have just in case. Probably when I found out he was dating 3 other girls at the same time. And the girls and I exchanged screenshots of conversations with him. How creepily similar the way he spoke to us all. Charming nice dude. Unless you don't give him what he wants. In high school. My boyfriend at the time and I shared a math class together. It was well known we were dating so I would always take him his homework via teacher's request if he missed, he skipped a lot. I broke up with him over Christmas break, he cheated on me. Math teacher obviously still assumed we were together so he asked me to bring him his homework. I did. Got to his house. Wanting to drop it off at his doorstep. He told me to come in and explain it to him. He locked his bedroom door and started saying sheet like if I can't have you then no one else can. I could get you back in a second. Just admit it. ETC. Then the true kicker, if I healed you or if you died. I would keep your body in my closet or hung behind my door just to have sex with it. Disclaimer, I never had sex with him and I think that held him. He then proceeded to try to make out with me and jam his hands down my pants. He actually thought it was endearing and had no idea why I was so upset. I got out. Called my mom to pick me up. And ran back to the school, he lived close. Terrifying. To this day I'm still horrified about it and him. Last I heard he was trying to be a magician. Looks like Charles Manson and is in and out of psych wards. My sister who I no longer have contact with has psychopathic tendencies. My worst moment was about 5 years ago. She was showing me a new knife of hers. A giant blade with serrations down the back. I remember looking in her eyes and there was this cold. Eileen looked to them. The hairs on the back of my neck rose and I had this idea she was going to stab me. I realized my instincts were picking up on her thinking about stabbing me. She didn't stab me. But I kept thinking about it and I truly think she was imagining what it would be like to stab me with her new knife. I have a lot of stories about my sociopathic former roommate. But one of the most uncomfortable moments I had with him was when he stared me dead in the eyes and asked. Bravado. How can I express more realistic emotions and then he became slightly annoyed when my one answer was have them in the first place. I think my best friend may have been. For example, she got a job at a business that she wanted to learn. And when she had made enough money to start her own business. 
she totaled her employees van. Hired off the designer and stole all the clients. Then she paid the designer way less than she had promised and then closed her business completely in a few months when she was bored. She also pulled really bad things in relationships which I really don't want to get into. Well. Anyway. She was about to ruin someone's life. Again. I couldn't take it anymore and ratted her out. That is when I had heard all the lies she had spun her whole life. That I lived with her and she supported me and I was a hero win addict. That she had starred in major films. That she was prom queen. So I cut her out of my life. And after weeks of her calling me and begging me to come back. I was sitting at home. Looked up and saw her standing over me. My first thought was that she healed my dog. She hadn't. Honest. Just normal conversation. We sensationalize it a lot in the media. But really having a conversation with someone that can't feel empathy is super boring. Me. Hey I was driving to work today and some guy cut across 4 lanes of traffic and almost caused an accident so she a path friend. Okay me. Alright well good taking to you. Roll my eyes. By far figuring out how she dangerous she actually was. I grew up with her until she was removed from the house due to trying to burn it down with us in it. She said it was a suicide attempt. Okay. Whatever. Maybe. Years later I find out her house burned down with her disabled daughter in it. She said it was an accident. Candle or some bullshit like that. Possible coincidence. But highly unlikely. She did other things too. For example. Poured paint over every item I owned when I was around 10. Slept with a knife under her pillow. Etc.